So, uh, a business analyst. A business analyst. So, <laughs> who is a business analyst? And I'm saying business analyst is someone who understands understands the need and captures or the right word would be elicits stakeholders requirements in five to ten seconds this is what i said understands the need or the business need and captures or elicits elicit is the right word to draw out to bring forth stakeholders requirements so now let me ask maybe uh salim salim just like how i said for me this is who a business analyst is, uh, can you quickly in five to 10 seconds tell us what is your take on business analysis and what do you think is the role of a business analyst? I already said this, right? The most important thing. Let's go. The role of a business analyst to uncover the underlying assumptions of stakeholders. Yeah, very good. Uh, one of the goals, uh, roles of a business analyst, a task of a business analyst is to uncover or document document any underlying assumptions associated with requirements what does that mean it means that nothing nothing is uncovered nothing is uh, you know um, in dark here, everything about that requirement is known. There are no assumptions or there are no facts that are considered to be true, but have not been verified yet. That's what an assumption is. Assumptions are those facts that are per perceived to be true, but have not been verified yet. Right? Great. Very good. Uh, business analysts would also, with every requirement, document any underlying assumptions associated with the requirements. Great. Awesome. Uh, let's ask most of our most of our I said business analyst is someone who understands the needs of the stakeholders and captures or elicits requirements based on those needs and uh, Salim ended up saying they also document any underlying or uncover any underlying assumptions associated with requirements because business analyst is someone who must capture pure requirements mm -hmm. pure requirements right yep. that's great so most of all, let's hear it from you what do you, you think uh, is the is the primary goal of a business analyst um the primary goal i guess i'm not 100 percent sure but from what i would assume is to to take in enough information from the stakeholders to know exactly what they're going to be outputting right or what they're going to be doing or uh, ask probing questions so most of us said let's ask probing questions yeah, probing so questions. open questions, no open ended questions. Probing, probing questions to not only not only document said requirements that stakeholders say and tell us said requirements, but also capture unsaid requirements very important actually this is one of the core strengths of a business analyst their ability to ask probing questions and capture not only the set requirements things that our stakeholders tell us but also uncover unsaid requirements that usually they do not say sometimes stakeholders make an assumption that you know it as much as they know it and they withhold information totally unintentional but they do sometimes and good business analysts that's why uh go in there and not only just capture what stakeholders are saying but also uncover what they don't say sometimes right so great awesome so that's what that's what most of us said and continue moving to maybe yasin yasin what do you think is the uh, role of a business analyst five seconds ten sec five to ten seconds 
uh, facilitating and understanding the needs of stakeholders and progressing, make sure it's, it gets done essentially. Facilitation, right? And building consensus with stakeholders is one of another uh, core attribute that a business analyst demonstrates. So facilitation to form consensus. Absolutely, it could be on requirements or it could be on any other issue, uh, any other request, facilitation, a core, a core skill of business analysts. Let's go to Urvashi and let's ask Urvashi, what do you think is the role of a business analyst? Well, Himan and everyone, you have covered almost everything. And I feel um, stakeholder management okay, and conflict, Very good. Con conflict resolution, negotiation. Okay, that's, that's good. I'll take, take stakeholder management from you. That's good okay. enough. Stakeholder management. What is stakeholder management? Stakeholder management is set the right expectations, manage them, and most importantly, meet them. Don't set unrealistic expectations with stakeholders, right? Set the right expectations, manage them throughout the project, and ensure that you meet them. Because until and unless you don't meet stakeholders' expectations, they will not be satisfied, right? If they are not satisfied, this project has not delivered any value to stakeholders. Great, awesome, guys. Good job. Let's hear it from uh, Asya. Asya, what do you think uh, is the role of a business analyst? We captured quite a lot, but there is still uh, some some left. I think it's collaboration with like various teams. Very good. Collaboration is the key. I collaborate with different teams. There would be times when you would be working on projects where there will be diverse stakeholders with varied or different needs. You would have to, during that time, demonstrate this ability to collaborate. When you collaborate, collaboration leads to relationship building relationship building. Absolutely. These are some of the things we do as a business analyst. But there is something even more important. And uh, last time when Salim was saying something about business analysis, and uh, I would not use the word, he shocked me with some of the good knowledge that he presented to me in the beginning itself. He said something like enablement of change. Business analyst is someone who helps enable change or who is uh, who is a key member of this team that helps enable change in an organization, right? Enablement, enablement of change. So let's maybe put it here. Business analyst is someone that helps enable change. If I say I want to change, you know what is change? If you define change, change is act of transformation in response to a need. It is an act of transformation in response to a need. Enablement of change is what a business analyst does, right? So tomorrow, so one of, why did I uh, build this mind map here? There will be times in an interview when, stay, when the interviewer is going to ask you, Hey, why don't you tell me about your core strengths? I think 40% of business analysis interview, this is something that they ask you. And people struggle to put, and they say things like transparency, integrity, communication. By the way, communication is the baseline here. If you can't communicate, you cannot be a business analyst, right? So transparency, integrity, these are the, the this is, the, uh, this is uh, the language of past. In the new era, the new, uh, era where we practice business analysis, we say things that we just mentioned. These are your ideas. They understand the business need and they help capture requirements. They strip requirements of any underlying assumptions. Most of us said, well, a business analyst is someone who would not only cover, uh, will not only capture the said requirement, but also uncover and said requirement by asking probing questions. Urvashi said, Urvashi said, well, it is about stakeholder management, right? 
Uh, as you said, collaboration is the key which leads to relationship building. And so many of you said so many great, such great things. So any next time and I ask you, well, can you please tell me what are your core strengths? I would like to hear this. My ability to understand the need, my ability to be part of a team that enables change, my ability to capture stakeholders requirement, uh, documenting those underlying assumptions with requirements and stripping requirements of any assumptions and making it as pure as possible. Stakeholder management is one of my strengths. Influencing could be one of my strengths, right? These are your strengths as a business analyst from today onwards. I want you to make your own answer around it and speak the story of business analysis in your own way sometimes. Don't rely on the content that I send you because this is, these are some of your strengths. Or if someone said to you, well, uh, Bisma, this question is for you. Well, Bisma, what do you do as a business analyst? This was one of the questions that was asked to Rohan uh, about three, two, two and a half weeks ago at CIVC by the manager. What do you do as a business analyst? What would you say, Bisma? I would say as a business analyst, um, my job is to work with stakeholders to work on their requirements and their needs. And, and look at this, how much we have here. And you ended up just saying one line, right? I want you to read it from the screen and say everything to everyone, right? Okay. Um, okay, so a business analyst is someone that asks probing questions to meet the requirements. Um, I can't really read some of the stuff. Okay. Did you take some notes? Yeah. Okay, so read from your notes. Okay, so um, a business analyst is someone that can um, negotiate and. We didn't even uh, write negotiate, but anyways, that's fine. Oh, let's, sorry, ask, let's ask Maria. Maria, how about you tell us what does a business analyst, what does, what does a business analyst do primarily in an organization based on what we just documented, what we just said, all of us said, right? Okay, we can't hear you. All right, so that's fine. So let's go to maybe uh, uh, let's go to Rupam. Rupam, let's hear it from you. Uh, what are some of the things that a business analyst does? So a business analyst uh, documents any underlying assumptions uh, associated with requirements, uh, or a business analyst ask probing questions to not only document the set. Hey, Rupam, I like what you're saying, but I would have liked it even more if you said that the primary focus of a business analyst is to understand the need and capture stakeholders requirements. You must always, anytime when someone says, what do you do as a business analyst? This is what you got to say. I understand the business need first and I capture stakeholders requirements. And look, look, when you capture stakeholders requirements, then you can do what Salim said, strip requirements of any assumptions by asking probing questions. Then you can do what most of us said. Well, capture the said as well as unsaid requirements. Then you can collaborate during this time. Then you can stakeholder manage during this time and set, manage, and meet the expectations. Then you can uh, facilitate, right, during that time and all the other things that we said together. But the first and the foremost thing for us from today onwards is that a business analyst my primary focus as a business analyst is to understand the business need or understand the need and capture stakeholder requirements based on that need. What does that mean? What does that mean? This is what it means, guys. Look, let's say you are my stakeholders and I'm a business analyst. I just joined the project. I read a document and the document said, or I read a document, I was given so I'm a business analyst and I join, join an organization, an organization. I'm given, they give me a document. They give me a document to read. My manager gives me a document to read. And when my ma manager gives me a document to read, 
in that document somewhere in the first page itself it says this project is about building a website this is the need right now your manager says well you already saw that document what that document is not in scope for today but that high level document that was given to you to understand this project you read this, this project is about building a website now you your project manager called you and said well well Hemant, i would like you to start capturing eliciting requirements of the stakeholders and here you go here is the list of stakeholders and these stakeholders are yeah you have to meet yasin you've got to meet mona you have to meet urvashi you got to meet maria you have to meet rupam and you have to meet mustafa these are your stakeholders i want you to meet these stakeholders this is the beginning of a project so you go to I go to Yasin and say, Yasin, well, I'm here to capture the requirements. And Yasin says, of course, you know what? I was waiting for this. This project has been, uh, we've been waiting for this project for so long. I'm glad we have started this. And Yasin is all excited and says, in the website, I like a home page. This is my requirement. And I'm going to provide you the content. Look, a business analyst is not sitting there writing the content. Requirements are stakeholders' perspective. It is not your perspective. It is not my perspective. It is not other person. It is your stakeholders perspective, your stakeholders related to your project. So Yasin gives this requirement homepage and I'll give you the content for the homepage. Now I schedule a meeting with Urvashi and Maria together. Sometimes business analysts don't just go individually interviewing everyone. I scheduled kind of a workshop with them. I said, could you please give me your requirement for this website? And Roshi says, well, you know what? We like contact us page. And along, the, along with that, I'll also give you some content for the blog. So, and at this time I can tell Roshi, well, you know what? I have worked on various different blogs. When you're writing this content, I like to help you out here because we want to help our stakeholders out. Now I go to, uh, Maria and Maria says, well, you know what? My laptop is not working. How can I get it fixed? Is this project going to fix my laptop? I know the need. And the need is I have to build a website. I tell Maria, Maria, well, this is not my project's requirement. Our project is to build a website, but I can help you with this. I'll give you the number of the tech support who helped me resolve this issue. So look, if a business analyst does not know the need so if a business analyst does not know the need and goes to the stakeholder and starts collecting their requirement asia what is one of those risks that can uh, uh uh what is one of those risks or what is one of those you know uh, let's just use the word bad thing that can happen if you don't know the uh, need and you go out there collecting the requirement what would happen you would be delivering diminished value because you're, you don't understand what you're supposed to be delivering and it would just be a waste of like your time and money and effort the other thing is that you will end up collecting requirements that are not your project's requirement every project there is certain time allocated to it every project there is some money allocated to it now you are sitting there capturing the requirements of stakeholders that are not related to your project so good business analysts when they join a project, uh, so good business analysts, when they join a project, Mona, the first thing in the early stages that they should do is to uh, get priority. Did I use the word priority today? No, I did. <laughs> so look at the screen. How did this project start? Who gave me a requirement and what did I find in that requirement document? Um, the underlying um, assumptions associated. Did we put any underlying? Okay, wait here. Let's go to maybe, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Salim. Salim, when you join an organization, 
and you're given a high level document of some sort, you review it. What do you get from there as a business analyst? Uh, you get um, you get their uh, their requirements, okay? Um, and uh, no, uh, so so needs, yeah, Yassine, but... what do you get from that high level document? What do the stakeholders want, and what are the requirements? Or or you could say a very high level need Me. that stakeholders want. Right? I said, whatever you want to say and think a business analyst does is irrelevant. The most important thing that a business analyst does is that they understand the business need. Whatever stage you join the project, the first thing, you know, if I join the project in the end too, I want to understand what the business need is. What am I here for? What are we trying to build? What are we trying to develop? A website. Now, if I know that I'm here to develop a website and someone said, my uh, my office chair is broken and they start there. I would just stop them. I'd say, well, I'm here to collect the requirements for the project website, not the project infrastructure building. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, Yasin, question for you one more time. So, initially, when you join a project, what is it that you're trying to understand and establish? Especially when you join a product uh, project, uh, you're trying to understand what are the needs and requirements. Business need. What is the business need? That's it. What are business needs? If you know that high level business need, now when you go and capture the requirements, you will always map the business need, the requirement to the business need. You would always map. So if if I come and meet now Mona and I say, well, Mona, I'm here to collect the requirements for my project, and Mona may say, what project is it? Because in the morning I went to another project meeting and I provided the requirement and say, Mona, well, this project is about building a website. Oh, she said, oh, there you go. I want a product page in the website, right? Or if Mona says, well, uh, you know, we would like X thing and that is not related to my project. I just stop her right there. So understanding of need, what does it do? It helps you capture the right requirements. So you're not capturing irrelevant requirements of your project. Right? You're doing a great service to the organization by only, only documenting what truly maps to the business need. Very, very important for, uh, for, for a business analyst. At whatever stage of a project you, uh, you, jo you may join the project, you must always first understand or establish the business need. And then when you go out there capturing the requirements of stakeholder, every requirement that you capture, you must map it to the business need. So if my stakeholder said, well, I would like uh, this, this, uh, the website to, uh, to, be, uh, to be also shown in another geographical location, if my work is only building a website for Canada, I may stop them there. I said, no, the scope of the work is only Canada, right? So understanding the need is critical because when you understand the need, you are able to, you are able to document the right requirement, and this is actually great service to your team because you save them a lot of time. Otherwise, you will have to later on, later on, put together these requirements, say what is in scope for me, what is out of scope, right? That, ex that, that additional exercise can easily be avoided by developing understanding of the need. So, all right, question. Question for Urvashi, you join a project in the beginning, what is one thing that you must establish and understand? Understand the need and the expectations. The All right, perfect. No, no expectation. I didn't okay. say that. Just okay. understand the need okay. today. For today, let's just understand the business need. All right, thank you. And then when we capture the requirements, so Nita, when you capture the requirements, you always map these requirements to the requirements you capture the requirements from your stakeholder now you've gone to a stakeholder you're capturing the requirements you must always map the requirement that they're giving you to what to the business needs very good let's just stop there to the business need right are we all good here yeah. with this basic principle of business analysis right so you join a project now we get into really the meat of this session right you joined a project. And of course, the first step was a couple of 
couple of weeks, one to two weeks, you're given to review some relevant documentation. You review some, you review relevant, not irrelevant, relevant document, documents. And why are you reviewing, reviewing these documents? Because you want to establish or build understanding of business need of business need. And now you are ready to go out there and start capturing the requirements of stakeholder, right? So let's say you join a project and this project will be an agile based project project will be an agile based project. And if you join my last two sessions that you are part of, and if you have looked at the video, this will be uh, easier for you today to, uh, to consume, right? If you've not uh, gone through that video two hour and 40, 40 minutes, and if you've not attended any of the session, this session may be a little heavy for you, little heavy, right? Not very heavy because we're starting from the beginning. And you've joined an agile based project. The first step, whether you join an agile based project, adaptive project or a predictive project, it's critical for us to establish the business need. Now, even on agile based project that you've joined, what you do is you start working. You start working with a key stakeholder. On an agile based project, you start working with this key stakeholder and this key stakeholder is called product owner. These are the people you want to build relationship with. With These are the people you want to stay very close and tight with. They're the people, uh, these, these are the folks that will help you, help you understand the entire project. If you build great relationship, if you demonstrate great communication skill, and if you keep your nervous energy down in front of them, right? Uh, they, they will help you. They will help you quickly come up to speed. Extremely powerful stakeholders on the project are product owners. So you start working with key stakeholders, product owner, and you start putting together a requirement document. In agile, in agile projects, this requirement document is called product backlog. Backlog. Or you don't have to say it. When I will give you an opportunity to speak, then you speak, right? When I give you an opportunity to speak, so many of you don't say the right thing. So please absorb the content, right? Right now, this is the time to just absorb the content. Okay, product backlog. You start building a product backlog. Product backlog could be a very simple spreadsheet for today. Let's just say a product backlog is a very simple spreadsheet where you document stakeholders needs or stakeholders requirements, right? So the requirement document in Agile is called product backlog and something that you will start doing in the beginning of the project. And this product backlog would contain ID for that requirement, the requirement, stakeholders requirements that are, you know, we, we say I am here to capture the requirements of my stakeholder in, in stakeholders in agile projects. We call them the user stories. All the requirements are documented as user stories. So, so an ID for the, the requirement or a user story, the description of the user story, its priority is documented in the beginning. And there is also a small little, you know, very high level estimate of the user story or how long it will take and all that. But we do not necessarily say how long, but there is some high level estimate, sometimes called coarse grained estimate. And there could be some other comments that you may put associated with the requirement. So, what did we learn here? What we learned was a requirement document in Agile projects is called a product backlog, right? Product backlog. Product backlog contains all the features and functions that your stakeholders want. When I go now, this time when I go to here 
to, to Yasin. Yasin says, number one says, I would like a home page. So it's a high priority and low est estimate. Uh, it's, it's low effort. It's low effort, right? Low effort. We are not saying how many days right now. We are saying, uh, again, if you were in the last session, and we, I had sent you a video of that session. Uh, I know it's a very long session, four hour session, but if you were in the session and if you went through the video, this would, this would make sense. We're using, remember we said estimation techniques like t-shirt sizing and planning poker. Some of you must remember that, right? So estimation is given some story points are associated and you may put some comment here. Content will be provided by Yasin. Content will be provided by Yasin. Then now look, homepage. So in agile project, you could now hear this well. In agile projects, you could work on any agile project with any organization in the world, anywhere. You could work with Deloitte, you could work with PwC, you could work with Royal Bank, you could work with TD Bank, you could work with CIBC, you could work with uh, Arab, you could work with City of Hamilton. If you're working on an agile based project, you will document the needs of stakeholders or in other words, the requirements of stakeholders in agile projects, we call them user stories using a meta language. When I say meta language, the description of how you write requirements, which are called user stories on agile projects is same across the board because they have given a meta language or acceptable way of writing a user story. So what is a user story? What is a user story? So based on what I just said to you and what I've been saying for last five minutes, based on that guys, user story is nothing but a need. A requirement, absolutely. It is a requirement, right? User story is nothing but a requirement of stakeholder. It's just a fancy word in Agile. In Agile project, we call them user stories, right? So user story, number one, is a short description, description of the need of the stakeholder, absolutely short description, right? And needs, if I say I have a need, my need could be to exploit an opportunity and my need could also be a, to resolve a problem. You know, most of the initiatives, projects that you will be part of, either will be about solving a problem, resolving a problem, addressing a problem, or or exploiting an opportunity. Most of the projects that you will be part of, right? So what is need? Need is either a problem statement or it is an opportunity statement. It's never outside this boundary. Keep this in mind. Next time, if I ask you, what is a need? You must say, well, need is a very high level description of either a problem statement or an opportunity statement, right? So what is a user story? It's a short, short description of the need. And this need could be either a problem statement, it could be a problem statement or an opportunity statement. Right? So I said all user stories, whether you work for Deloitte or you work for a bank in Canada or in the US, if you have learned how to write a user story, the syntax the way it is written is common across all enterprises in the world. Because, because in agile projects, agile, agile way of executing projects, they have developed a meta language. Meta language is description, right? Meta, when we say meta, it says description about something. So they have established a meta language. They've established a syntax, right? They established a syntax. So if you're coding, there is a syntax for coding. So similarly, and if you're doing counting, 
for 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 writing uh, 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 building a financial sheet sheet most of the financial uh, balance or balance sheets would be inflows outflows and net cash flow if you're working as an accountant right this is the syntax i would never not see net cash flow first then outflow and then inflow i see inflow outflow net cash flow balance sheet right similarly for agile so if someone said to you, well, describe a user story for me, you would say user story is a short description of the need. It could be a problem or an opportunity statement. And all user stories must contain three core Three core components. What are these three core components? So when I go to my stakeholder and Yasin says, I like a home page. I ask Yasin, so well, Yasin, who will use it? Yasin says, Well, our customers will use it. There we go. And Yasin, I asked Yasin. It's the second question. What are they going to use it for? Yasin says, uh, I say, what are they going to use it for this? Yasin says, well, my customers are going to use it to, to see all the products, or this will be the navigation point for my stakeholders. All right. I say, who, what, and finally, why? What is the benefit? Why means value or the benefit and Yasin says the benefit is people will be able to navigate from one place without having any confusion just like Amazon search electronics there you go you are able to you don't have to go and read about Amazon first and then figure out where the it's so intuitive right so now Someone says, well, define a user story for me. I said, well, user story is a short description of the need and need could be a problem statement or an opportunity statement. User stories usually would contain three core components of who the actor or person who's gonna use it. What, the description, how are they going to use it and why, what is the benefit? So every need requirement in Agile, we call it user story, must satisfy this criteria of three components. And if you know how to, yeah, it's all about, I said, requirements are stakeholders perspective. They are not your perspective. So how do I capture my stakeholders perspective? I capture my stakeholders perspective by asking probing questions. What are the three probing questions associated with the user story? We ask who, what, and why. If a user story does not have any of the three component, it is, it is an impure requirement. That means there are too many assumptions, as Salim said in the beginning, hanging with this requirement. That means there is a lot of hidden truth about this requirement. That means there will be, if you deliver this requirement without cleaning it up or put, putting it into these three components, you will definitely deliver something which is has diminished value. As someone used that word, diminished value today, right? So. In an interview that you may go in RBC, this is one of the questions the manager may ask, hey, well, tell me about a user story. What do you think is a user story? I would like to hear this from you. I don't really care about what the script says from today or the answer that you will get. I would like to hear what I just said today, right? This is what I want to hear. And what the question that will come to you, what is a user story would be pretty close to what's here. But are we all, good here do we all understand what a user story is everyone right user story is nothing but the need of a stakeholder right so let's hear it from someone let's hear it from most of most of let's hear it from you let's define a user story to us in a very simplistic way i'm not using the word layman uh in a very simplistic way because look if you cannot put things simply you've not learned it yet einstein this is what Einstein said. If you can put things simply, you have not learned it yet. So let's hear it from you. Let's see how much you learned today. <clears throat> a short description of the need. Okay, all right. What else? Um, 
a problem statement or an opportunity statement. Okay, what uh, else? A user statement, uh, and then the, the who, the what. And all user stories must address three core components of who, what, and why. Who is the actor or the user of the user of the feature? What, how they will use it? Why, what is the benefit? If a stakeholder cannot provide you value or benefit that will come from a user story. So look, someone said, I'm building a house and someone said, could you please, uh, could you please pave the road outside the house, the boundary of the house? I asked them, what would be the benefit to the people who are investing into this house and they couldn't tell me any. So why am I wasting my project's money and time uh, in doing that? Right? You got to challenge the stakeholders to think about some value and benefit. If there is no value and benefit, why should you deliver a feature, a requirement? That's the, you know, that's the good thing about agile. Even when you are documenting a user story, you are making a stakeholder think. Because in the end, every project now hear this well, every project consumes organizational resources such as time money, infrastructure, people. And if there is no value in doing the work that I'm doing, why should not I use this time, money, infrastructure, people, and do something else in the organization which will generate better value? Don't you think so? If you got a million dollar and, and you said, your friend said, well, there is a 50% chance this million dollar will double, but there is a 50% chance this million dollar will, uh, will become zero, right? one option second option someone else gave you there is a 99 percent chance that your money will be 10 percent increase within the next three months there is a 99.9 percent .9%. what is the better opportunity stakeholders should think right where is the better opportunity for me should i take the risk of 50 percent should i take that risk where there is a chance 50 percent chance that i'm going to lose all the money or should i take this other opportunity where in three months there is a hundred percent almost hundred percent chance of realizing 10% benefits, right? You have to make your stakeholder think. Sometimes you stop the stakeholders from injecting their requirement into the product backlog. So based on what we learned, so good Mustafa, you were close, but not exactly where I needed to be, uh, but move on. So let's go to maybe, let's ask this question to, uh, to, to Mona, Mona, question for you. Uh, what is the product backlog? Um, it's the high level description of problem statements or uh -oh. opportunity uh -oh. statements. Uh oh, product backlog. What is a product oh, backlog? Sorry, so that includes all of the features and functions that stakeholders want. So product backlog is a placeholder for all the needs of stakeholders or let's features just and functions. Let's keep it very clean. A placeholder for all the requirements of stakeholders called user stories. Right? Yeah. And a product backlog will contain a user, a user story ID, user story description, priority of the user story, some level of high level estimate of the user story, and some other comments that maybe provide greater level of details around the user story. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? So product, if someone said, oh, have you created product backlog? Of course, in my most recent project, a product backlog this could be a very simple spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that contains user story ID, user story description, priority of the user story, uh, estimation, some very high level estimation, and some comments that may provide some greater le level of details about this user story, right? Good, everyone, clearly, do we understand what is the user story? What is the product backlog? Okay. Quick quiz, quick quiz for all of us. Just, you know, when I when when I ask you questions, the reason I ask you questions is not because I wanna I wanna uh, you know uh, gauge your skill. No, the reason I ask questions is because I want to make sure that we have uh, I want to ensure confirmation on of your understanding. That's it. If if it is not clear, if I don't get the right answer from you, I like to stop. And I like to I like to provide you an answer that you can comprehend, understand in your own way. 
That is the only reason. So I want you to fearlessly answer questions, keeping in mind that we have a constraint of time. Don't just go out there elaborating things, right? When you elaborate things, you really open a can of worms. Winning an interview is all about keeping it short, concise, and true to knowledge. If you can do that, you become master of this subject, right? So let's, uh, quick quiz for you. You joined an agile based project. What is one of the most important things that you must do in the beginning? Whether you join an agile project or any other project. Let's ask Maria this question. Um, it would be to establish, establish the business needs. Very good. Establish or understand the business needs. Good job. Any, it, it could be agile based project and it could be the waterfall predictive style. The first thing is, let me understand what the business need is. Okay, great. So Rishi, you understood the business need. What could be your possible next step? Your manager now could ask you to go out there and meet your stakeholders and understand what? Elicit stakeholders requirements. Understand their requirements. Very good. And you may use, you know, probing, ask probing questions, interview them, have a workshop with them. Good. Very good. All right. So Yasin, you're working on an agile based project. You understood the business need and now you're meeting your stakeholders. Why are you meeting your stakeholders? Uh, to ask probing questions and uncover the needs and the, the requirements. That's good, but why are you, why are you, what are you going to do on an agile based project? You capture, you understood the need, you started meeting the stakeholders. What would you do when you're, what, what do you do now? Meeting the stakeholder. Now, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm talking about agile based project. What do you start? What do you start working on? Product uh, backlog. Uh, start, no. You start creating the product backlog and Rupam in the product backlog. You go meet the stakeholder. The, and once you finish that meeting, you document. What do you document in the product backlog? So, uh, I'll document the normal spreadsheet, which will contain uh, the user ID, uh, user no, no, story. No, you don't document the product backlog could be a spreadsheet. But in the spreadsheet, you will document the needs of stakeholders in the form of. Okay. In the form of a uh, user ID, uh, user no, no, stories. No, no. In the form of a user story. In the form of user. Okay. Right. In the form of and, user stories. And the description of that user story in the product backlog could be, you know, number one, the ID, a very unique ID. Number two, the description of the user story. What does that mean? It means I want a homepage. Who, what, and why? The three components. But it's further refined. You, you just don't go out there and say, uh, Yasin wants a home page. Who wants it? Uh, what do they want? And why do they? No, it's not like that. There is another, there's a way of writing it. But that way of writing contains three components. Right? Good. Everyone here. So Rupam said, well, uh, when I start meeting my stakeholders, I start filling up this document called the product backlog. Uh, and uh, I document all the user stories in there. All right, great. Let's go to uh, let's go to Nida. Nida. So uh, you start documenting the user story, and the next question, and the obvious question is, what does a user story contain? What is the meta language for a user story? What is the syntax for a user story? So the user story contains short description of the needs of the stakeholders. And uh, the user stories are written in the similar syntax, and it should contain three core components that are who, what, why. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who, who is the user? Who, the actors who use it, what, how will they use it, why, what value, and what benefit would they get from it? Very good. There you go. Right? That's it. More confidence, but we are all moving in the right direction. You are, to be honest, if you were to go for with, with uh, for an interview, and I'm hoping I would be able to. Like Peter has gone on a parental leave in RBC, uh, but the moment he comes back and Dave comes back, uh, uh, I'm planning to send some people for an interview. These are two classic questions that he and I have decided that we're going to ask, right, people. So there you go. You can answer. You're going in the right direction, and we are learning. So continue moving. So. You document the user stories in the early stages. You put together this document called the product backlog. 
right? And stakeholders continue to give you the requirements and the moment they give you this requirements, you document it there. All right, now let's go think about, now let's think about a mobile application. Most of you on projects are going to work on TD mobile application, CIBC mobile application, RBC mobile application, Scotia Bank's mobile app. You all are going to work on mobile application project, mostly, mostly, right? So let's think about a feature has never been built. And one of the stakeholders, one of the stakeholders, Zan, Zan, one of the stakeholders, reaches out to the business analyst, Mustafa. Mustafa is the business analyst. Zan, the stakeholder, reaches out to Mustafa and tells Mustafa, well, Mustafa, I would like, in this mobile banking mobile application, ability to pay bills. This feature never existed before, ability to pay bill. Mustafa, this is building mobile application project and and uh, and Zane's requirement is a 73rd requirement. Mustafa goes to the product backlog. There are already 73 requirements here, which have been documented, 73. Now writes down 74 and, and Mustafa asks Zan three core questions of user story. What are the three core questions, Mustafa, that you will ask Zan? Um, it was who, where, and why? Not where. Sorry, who, who what, and why? Who, what, sorry, who, what, and why? Who, what, and why? Good. All right. So, but you don't just say, well, 74, who the customer, what they would like to pay the bills, why, so that they don't have to go to the branch. They save time. Three things. But no, this is not how you write it. You know, you, a user story contains three core components, but what is the meta language? As an authorized customer, you should be logged in to pay the bill as an authorized customer. So you are saying it from the perspective of the customer. I would like the ability to pay bills using my handset device. I will like the ability to pay bills using my mobile handset so that I can save time. Save time. Here you go. This user story gets documented here. So you do not say who, what, and why, but you do type it out here as story number seven. So who? Customer who is logged in into mobile application. What are they using it for to pay the bills? And why, what is the benefit? It saves them time. They can do it on the fly. They can, uh, they don't have to go to the branch anymore to do it, right? Or they don't have to go to the ATM to do it. So there you go. So all the user stories that you will write, guys, they will always be as a user or an as a as a custom uh, authorized customer. If you're using a if you're building an application where people can come and paint, you could say as a painter, as someone who wants likes to paint, I would like to use this application to draw different things, <coughs> colorful things, and. I don't have to use watercolors and, and dirty out my house and all those kind of things, right? So just like this, my daughter just sent me this. She just created this mask right here. So I was looking at it, I had to respond to her because she must be thinking I didn't respond to her. She was working on it yesterday, so there. She created a mask, right? She likes this dark, the idea of her life right now is a little dark, so. Right, all girls, I think, or boys go through this phase of being dark. So, yeah, so it doesn't bother me. Anyways, so, so here you go, right? As an authorized customer, I like the ability to pay bills using my mobile handset so that, now let's say you have to, all of us, let's all of us together write a user story for me. You're working in mobile banking application. Up till now, up till now, uh, you had to go to the branch 
or ATM to deposit your check. Now we have we are planning to create a feature. By the way, Bank of America was the first bank in the world to come up with mobile application. Oh, sorry, mobile capture, mobile capture or image capture, or you can say check capture. Then in Canada, you know, the smallest bank called CIBC became the first bank to develop this feature of check capture in 2015 or 2016. It was not RBC. It was not TD. It was not even the first mobile application in Canada was developed by CIBC bank. It was not TD, RBC or other these two, two right uh, banks. So let's say this feature does not exist and Urvashi, the stakeholder, calls the business analyst Bisma and says, well, Bisma, I have a requirement for you. 75 requirements are already documented in the product backlog. Bisma opens the product backlog and documents Urvashi's requirement. And this is what Urvashi has sent an email to Bisma. In the email, she's written, well, I would like uh, my customers to have this ability uh, to, uh, to be able to capture the image and, and submit the checks and, and I want their balance to be accordingly adjusted. Something like that. The stakeholders are very vague. So Bisma thinks about, so Bisma, you have to document this user story in the product backlog. So you open the product backlog and you enter 75 or 76 now, whatever your last user story was. And what are the three core, com in the email that Urvashi sends you, what are the three things that you're looking for in that email? Um, who, what, and why? What and why? And who is the authorized customer? Because look, you can't image, capture the image without being logged in into your account. If you don't have a username, password, or you are not an authorized user, you will not be able to do it. You got to log in face ID recognition or whatever it is, right? As so let's write the user story for check capture as uh, an authorized user. All of us will write it guys. All right. How about so Bisma has received an email. All of you have received an email from Urvashi. Let's hear your user stories a little bit. User story to capture the image and submit it and your balance will get updated. So let's hear it from you. I'm giving you about 30, 35, 40 seconds to write that. The three core components, who, what, and why, and the email says, I would like the ability, I would like to give my clients the ability for them to be, to capture the image using the camera on their handset and submit that image. And that image is acceptable to the bank. Their balances will be updated and they don't have to go to a bank. They don't have to go to an ATM anymore. There you go. Uh, Zen, is your camera not working? All right, so who would go first? Three, four people. Let's just hear your user stories. Who's going first? I can go first, Nita. Yes, go go ahead, Nita. Yeah, so first, uh, an authorized user needs to log into the account in order no, to- No, 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 that's not the user story. Maintain okay. the meta language. Okay, so, so, Okay, so the, there are three important components in the user story. Okay, stop. I want to hear the exact user story. I'll go to Rupam. Rupam, let's hear it from awesome. you. Uh, as an authorized user, I would like to capture check image using camera with my mobile handset. 
so that I can save time. Uh, so that so that I can deposit my check. All right. My balance would be updated. And of course, I can save time. Right. We have very rough user stories, but it should kind of reflect the whole thing of who, what and why. All right. Who is going next? next? I have a question with regards. I'll come back to your question, Rupam, very, very shortly. Okay. Uh, who's going next? Couple of other user stories, please. Hamid, um, can I go next? Yeah, please go ahead, Salim. As an authorized customer, I would like to take a picture using my mobile device to be able to scan and um, deposit checks uh, into my account to save time uh, and effort. Absolutely, good, right? And and um, and save time and effort. Absolutely. Uh, so there you go. So there were some, you know, how we are progressing. Uh, we get very coarse grain in the beginning. Uh, Nita started giving the entire. Uh, you know, um, broader language here, which was concise by concise by Rupam and further refined by by Salim. I don't think I need to hear if if a user story was developed by Rupam stakeholder would refine it a little bit for Rupam. No one gets fired in business analysis, by the way, right? It's because Asia had said collaboration is is one of the things that business analysts do. It's very collaborative. It is very collaborative. So uh, Rupam writes a user story and goes to Urvashi and says, is that what you want? She says, yes, but let me just add some more. And the same, now, if Selim goes there to Urvashi, she says, oh, perfect, good job, right? But this is how we learn in the class, right? We continue to hear each other and they continue to refine the idea. So here we go. We learned how to write a user story. Very simple. If you end up on an agile based project, probably you'll be writing two to three user stories in a day. That's it. But easier said than done. You will have to go meet the stakeholder, right? You got to think here the stakeholder well. You will have to capture these three components and then put them in this syntax, in this meta language. And the good thing about agile is that, guys, the idea of agile or agile uh, uh, implementation is very consistent across all the domains and industries. The way we do things is pretty, pretty similar, right? So if you work on one project and you go to some other organization, the learning curve is really short. You just have to become or you will integrate into a team. The work is very similar and there is nothing like a business analyst who has 10 years of experience. And there is nothing like a business analyst who has six years of experience. The learning learning curve for any mature person who has hunger is pretty much the same. Fresh business analysts would have uh, some challenges, but these challenges will not be uh, uh, will not will not have any implication or will not be of the level of complexity where you cannot handle your job, right? All of you have friends who are working as business analysts. They didn't have any challenges. They've been able to overcome all the challenges. Every job that you will join, you could be working in an organization for 15 years. And if you change from one place to another, there is always a learning curve and organizations, especially CIBC right now and RBC are willing to give you a couple of months to come to speed. You are asked to shadow other people. What a there's no better way than this to start your career where you shadow some other people, right? All right. So this was user story. We learned about what a product backlog is. Now let's look at the idea of agile a little bit. You know, when you join a project in the very early stages, your task will be to support, support the product owner. Who is this product owner? Product owner is a person who is who is a domain or subject matter expert. Domain expert, they know about the business really well, right? Just like I'm uh, giving giving an example last week uh, when Amazon was created. Jeff Bezos was the product owner. Amazon, the product owned by Jeff Bezos. Initially, now there must be numerous product owners, 
numerous product owners in, in Amazon. But at that time, in the early infancy stages of that company, he knew the in and out and the, he had the vision. So product owner, who is a product owner? Product owner is someone, is a person who is a domain or a subject matter expert. Now, I do not want to hear something like he does this, he does this. I was surprised actually in my sessions, even so when I said, who do you work with? Someone said, I work with the PM and he, even the girls were saying he, and actually to your, to uh, uh, just for you to know, all my bosses, they've been women. All my bosses, directors, VPs, senior VPs, heads, they've been women. RBC, 63%, I think the last time we were executing a project as part of our leadership meeting, 63% of the leadership positions are with women are with women. And when you say, well, I work with a product owner and project product product owner and he, you will hardly find a he. Right? Most of the uh, these leadership roles slowly, slowly, especially business analysis, especially product ownership, where there is collaboration, somehow, but it is it's irrelevant whether uh, us, the men, agree to this or not. It is totally irrelevant. Neither I'm presenting an opinion, but the opinion of the industry is this, that product owner, women make better product owner because they collaborate better. This is what I've heard. This is what I've seen. I would like some of you to go change this perception, right? So we should. And I always try to change this perception, but this is how it is right now. So we got to change this perception. Anyways, so support the product owner who is a domain or so product owner is a domain expert. They have all the business knowledge. And if you do not understand this check capturing functionality, you could go to this product owner and ask them, can you please explain this to me a little bit better? Could you please tell me what you are thinking about here? Can we draw a picture on the whiteboard? Could you please do whiteboarding with me? Here you go. They're, they're there to help you because you are there to realize their vision. And they don't have so much time. Right? They can't sit with you or sit with everyone. They are extremely busy people. They're domain or subject matter experts. They have the vision of this product. They know the in and out of what this product will look like in the, they know the end state. They have the vision and they know the end state. They are the people who will provide you all the clarity. But, but you got to be smarter and use the time well when you are given time with the product owner, when you sit with them. After your initial days in the project, you become a proxy product owner. Everyone looks at you because the product owner is not there anymore. They kind of like left the responsibility on you, right? So uh, they, they know the vision, they know the end state. Product owners are also responsible for prioritization. They tell you what is important and what should be delivered. These are the folks that tell you what is important for them. For example, Amazon, Jeff Bezos told the developer, I want books first. Then came other things. They said, I want books first. There must have been so many choices available to Jeff Bezos. I could, should I go for books? Should I go for electronics? Should I go for computers? Should I go for kitchenware? Should I go? So decided books was the right place to go, right? So they prioritize. So in the product backlog, look, you got 74 requirements and you're building a project with 75 features. You will not with 75 features in one run. So in the first little run, the small little run that you will have where you want to build the five features, where you want to build four or five features, what is it that you will deliver? Will be decided by the product owner, right? So now look, they're the folks who will prioritize. And these are the folks who would normally tell the team what should be part of an iteration or what should be, what features and functions should be included in a certain iteration. So we're going to talk about now I'm driving you towards how you will be working on agile projects, right? But I want to stop here. Someone said to you, this is what someone said to you. And Lagbir at RBC said to you, 
Can you tell me what is your role as a business analyst on Agile project and what is product owner's role? Based on what I just wrote here, Maria, could you just tell us what is your role and what is product owner's role? And what is first, let's just hear about what is product owner's role. So the product owner's role, um, they're responsible for prioritizing and telling you what. No, no, to go from the top, Maria. I want you to always, uh, you know, capture the sentiment that I'm giving you. I always, I'm a very process oriented person. I like things to be said in a certain manner, right? And all of us are learning, right? All of us are learning right now, but I want you to consume information and present it the way I say it. I don't say random things, right? So I started with product owners are folks who are? They're the domain experts or SME. Subject matter experts. They know in and out of the business business area. Go ahead. Very good. There's a vision. Um, they know the vision of the product. Uh, of course, they know the vision. Yeah. And then they're responsible for prioritizing and telling. They also, so when we say vision, all of us, anyone says vision, vision means the desired end state. Where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? Do they want to drive this organization? What? What, what area they want to take it to? What is the desired future state? And of course, you said they are the folks who would prioritize and prioritization means what should be part of the of, of an iteration, the very next iteration. What should be part of an iteration? This is their role. What is the role of a business analyst when they're working with a product owner? Business analysts are people who are maintaining this product backlog for them. They are maintaining this product backlog for them. Business analysts are folks who are facilitating these prioritization sessions. Who has the, the say, the, the final say? It is the product owner. But business analysts are playing this supportive role. They're supporting because product owners are so busy. Business analysts are learning the business and trying to understand the business as much as the product owners know. They're trying to help the product owners in prioritization. They're trying to work with teams and ensuring that what the product owners want is being done. They're becoming the point of contact, right? So there is a clear definition and the role is also very, very uh, integrative and, and collaborative. It's like they work in close collaboration with each other. Right? Is everyone good with the role of a product owner? And what would be your role? Your role would be helping them prioritize, collaborative, right? Supportive, and most importantly, maintaining the product backlog. This product owner, the senior vice president, or the or the senior or the vice president of the organization, is not going to sit on the spreadsheet and over she's going to send an email and start thinking about who, what, and why. They don't have that time. You are there to do that. And your job is always to keep your product owner updated about the developments, right? Updated about the developments. Keep them. You are their eyes and their ears. This is this is your role. They should feel very confident in delegating things to you so that you can become their proxy. You can become their true representation. So some of you would also say things like, well, as a product, as a, as a as a business analyst, my job is to become a proxy product owner by gaining the domain expertise. My job is to remain very collaborative with my product owner and ensure that I am becoming the true reflection of my product owner, right? My job is also to facilitate prioritization session and work with the team in ensuring that the vision that my product owner established is being met, right? Different way. Just using this, you can say so many things. So when you go for an interview with LeGuerre, this is his favorite question in the first round. This is his favorite question. It's what he likes to say, ask, right? So what is your role as a product owner? What, have you worked as a product owner? No, I've not worked as a product owner, but I've supported them. Product owner's role is all the things that I wrote down here. And my role is more of a supportive role, maintaining the product backlog, ensuring that I gain the business knowledge so that I can become the true reflection, right, of a product owner or become a proxy product owner. So here you go. Now we go deeper into this subject. And 
let's talk about how are products built using Agile. Let's talk about how are these products. When I say products, we're going to talk about mobile application right now, right? How are these products built using Agile approach? And one of the most prevalent and consumed and used approach is Agile Scrum approach. This is what we are focusing on, Agile Scrum approach, right? So, so question for you, whenever we dive into a new topic, the starting point of new topic is what we have learned always, right? So don't try to create something here. Uh, don't try to say things that are not relevant and I have not said, right? Only things that are here in the six or seven slides that we have built. So guys, you have joined an agile based project. Your first step, I'll write it down here, was to understand the business need. And after this, you started working with the product owner in creating the product backlog. And now you have documented 97 user stories here in the product backlog. Every user story has complete description, the meta language as a user, authorized user. Every user story has a unique ID. Every user story has a priority. Every user story has, also has a very high level estimation and some comments that are providing a greater level of details about the user story or providing some clarifications or giving some indications to other folks who are going to use this user story and, and providing more clarity. So you captured 97 user stories, but just because the user stories have landed in a document called, called, uh, called a product backlog does not, does that mean that just because a requirement has been captured or a user story has been documented, does that mean the product is built? No, it is just a document. And one of the philosophies or value system of agile is idea of creating working solutions over comprehensive documentation. This is one of the uh, one of the philosophies, one of the founding principles or one of the founding values of Agile. Let us not waste too much time documenting these user stories in the product backlog. Let's not waste time there. Let's start building the product. The, you don't have to wait to document all the user stories. When you feel that you've got enough, enough level of detail, you're good to go. You're good to go. So now you have captured the product backlog, made it very stable. This is the time when the first level of prioritization takes place as part of iteration planning. From these 97 user stories, because they are also prioritized right here, there is a priority for every user story. Some of the top priority user stories are picked up and dropped into a separate document called iteration log, sometimes also called sprint log. So what is the team? trying to do here with the product backlog, uh, with the, sorry, with the product owner, the team right now, or the business analyst right now is working very closely with the product owner and creating a, a, a subset of the product backlog called iteration log. And they have dropped user stories from the product backlog, top three, four, five user stories, whatever the team thinks they can finish in next one to four weeks and they have dropped it into the iteration log. Iteration log is nothing but a subset of product backlog and contains and contains user stories that will be delivered in the next iteration, in this very iteration, right? 
So iteration planning leads to creation of an iteration log. Iteration log contains some of the high priority user stories. Let's say the iteration log right now contains a home page. And it also contains, let's say, check capture user stories. It contains two things right now. The team said in the next two, four week period, we will give you home page and we will give you check capture or image capture, whatever you may want to call it. Now, the team picks up these two user stories. Uh, and, and if I ask you a question, why did the team uh, pick, pay, why did they pick up these two user story? Your answer will be because product owner wanted these user stories to be delivered in the next iteration. These user story will generate maximum value. Get, build the product using user stories that generate maximum value. So home page check capture, but iteration planning, this this event called iteration planning, the first event called iteration planning is not just about creating an iteration log. It is also about working with the product owner and creating or developing something called definition of done or acceptance or acceptance and evaluation criteria, right? Definition of done or accept. And who provides the definition of done or the acceptance and evaluation criteria? It is the product owner provides it. And, but product owner doesn't have time to, to document all these things and write this for you. You are here, that's why you are here. So you say to the product owner, well, in the next one to four weeks, we are giving you, uh, we are giving you the home page, and we are giving you the check capture. Can you please provide us the acceptance and evaluation criteria? And the product owner says, "Well, for home page, as long as it is in English and French, as long as it contains the content that I am providing you, and as long as." There are no grammar errors here. And as long as the font is exactly same as the previous font or, or sometimes called corporate identity. As long as you are maintaining my corporate identity, I'll accept this, these two features. If you have, so, so look, when the development team will come and code the home page and check capture, they will call the product owner back to test it. The product owners will say, home page, is it in English and French? Yes, it is, pass. They will come and say, is the content exactly what I gave? Yes, pass. Is the, are there any grammar errors? Team said, no grab, pass. And is the corporate identity, be, and identity being maintained? So for example, what is corporate identity? We all look at these products. We look at these products. We all look at these great products. The moment you open CIBC application, you're used to saying maroon. You're used to seeing maroon. When you open RBC, you're used to seeing blue. When you when you open uh, TD, you're used to seeing a green couch. When you open BMO, I don't know what I'm, I don't have a BMO account, so I don't know. And Scotia Bank same, right? So I don't use it so much. Uh, so so uh, this is what is called corporate identity. You. When we create products and we progressively continue to create products, we want to ensure that we are maintaining the corporate identity because clients relate to our products in a certain way. And we don't want to break that link, the relationship that they have. So product owner says English and French. So they are just telling the team, guys, I want you to focus on building up. Don't try to make me happy here, right? The team is not here to make me happy and do gold plating. Gold plating is providing features and functions that are more than what I want. So don't go ahead and do focus on making a home page, which is English and French. Focus on ensuring that the content is exactly the way I want it. Focus on no grammar error. 
check it, right? Use our learning team, use their experts to ensure that there are no grammar error and focus on the corporate entity being maintained. So product owner has already said everything that they want in the product. So when the team, now iteration planning. What is iteration planning? Number one, iteration log is, is, is created, which is same as product backlog. So iteration log also contains user story ID, description of the uh, user story description, priority, estimation, and comment. It contains the same thing, but you have pulled it out and you're telling the product owner, based on the prioritization, these are the two items we are developing. Now, could you tell us what would it take for you to accept it? And the product owner says, acceptance and evaluation criteria. So iteration planning is about two things. One, creation of an iteration log that contains prioritized user story or user stories that will generate maximum value. And number two, it also, as a business analyst, we also document acceptance and evaluation criteria, right? So let's go here into a new slide and let's try to put this down in a nice new slide. So you joined a project, you did all that, those good things that you do, understand the need and all those things. You have sketched or created the product backlog, it's created the product backlog. Product backlog contains prioritized user stories, contains prioritized user stories. Once product backlog has been established or it is in a stable order or it's, it's stable, it's at this time, first event of agile starts called iteration planning. During iteration planning, iteration log is created and acceptance and evaluation criteria are established. Once iterate, this is called the first event of agile iteration planning. Once iteration planning is done, starts the development. Now the team have the requirement the team has the requirement development team. They also have what the product owner wants or acceptance and evaluation criteria. The team starts developing it and that development phase folks is called, it is called daily standup. Of course it is daily standup. Uh, but when I ask you questions then you must answer. Who who and who said daily stand up? By the way, me. Okay, Rupam said daily stand up. So Rupam, what is the other name uh, for daily stand up? Here you go. Now that you said it, say it one more time. Daily Scrum. Very good. Another name some organizations like to call, and this is nothing but the development phase, development phase of Agile. This is the time when developers are going to code the home page, build the home page, right? So, oh. So this is the time when they're going to develop the home page. So development team now is focused on developing the home page and the check capture page. They're focused on developing the home page and the check capture page. Plus, they will also internally test it to ensure that whatever the acceptance and evaluation criteria is this product meets the acceptance and evaluation criteria so development team usually this is one to four weeks most of the organizations like to keep it at two to four weeks two three or four weeks right so daily stand up the team already thought that they could deliver two requirements in one to four weeks 
they've started developing. So what is daily standup and daily scrum? Daily standup and daily scrum, every team member who is part of this development team speaks about what did I do yesterday? What am I planning to do today? And are there any impediments or roadblocks that we are facing? So we speak about three things. What is it that we did? Uh, what is that I, 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 what did I do yesterday? What am I planning to do today? And are there any impediments or roadblocks that we are facing? So let's go to Bisma Bisma. You are, it's 9 a.m. in the morning. The team meets for the daily stand up and you are in the development phase, right? Development phase means you are focused on delivering the user stories listed in the product backlog, or are you focused on developing? the user stories lit listed in the iteration log? User stories listed in the iteration log? Along with the user stories listed in the iteration log, you also have one more uh, component that you have developed during uh, the iteration planning that was provided to you by your product owner. What is that component? The acceptance and evaluation very criteria. Good. Very, very good, right? So development team stays within the boundary of this. Look, if I give someone the acceptance and evaluation criteria, you know what happens? I don't have to think about making my product owner happy by doing some sort of gold plating. I just have to keep my eyes on this acceptance and evaluation criteria. And as long as I build this, my stakeholder will be happy. My stakeholder, my product owner will be satisfied. So this is, the right, this is the best thing about agile teams don't have to think and overthink. Right, because is art of creating problems that do not exist. That's what overthinking does. It is an art of creating problems that really don't exist. People who overthink cannot become entrepreneurs. They can never become entrepreneurs because they overthink. Right. And the time just passes. The train has left the station now. So, so, uh, agile avoid the teams from overthinking product owner says guys i want you to focus on work and doing the work when it comes to daily stand up we will meet in the morning at 9 a.m and we all will talk about we all will talk about mona mona so daily stand up meeting is going on and you are one of the team members the business analyst what did you say in that daily stand up meeting <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about what I did yesterday, what I'm planning to do today, and what impediments I may have. Okay. So impediments. So if Mona has an impediment, and let's say, uh, let's say uh, Urvashi is the project manager, this is not the time they resolve it. She just goes on the whiteboard and puts a paste in, uh, post it and says, well, Mona has an impediment and we will talk about it after the meeting. These 15 minutes are time boxed, time boxed for this meeting every morning to speak about. And the idea of this meeting is to ensure that we are still on path to delivering homepage and image capture. That is, that is the idea of this, uh, this, this meeting, right? Everyone speaks about it. So look, on agile based projects, you cannot hide behind that big elephant. You got to be doing something because if you're not doing something and you're hiding around, you are going to caught, get caught very quickly, right? As much as uh, it's a high energy, I will not, uh, uh, not, not volatile, but high energy environment. Everyone is working towards one common goal, which is the vision of the product owner in delivering that vision. And most of the folks believe in that vision. They're very excited. So agile teams are a bunch of motivated individuals. They are extremely motivated and they love the product that they're creating because they see the product emerge in front of them, right? So keep that in mind. So uh, daily standup development team is focused on developing the home page and the image capture and uh, and uh, they are building the product based on acceptance and evaluation criteria. Nothing more, nothing less. They're not doing any gold plating. They're not trying to make the product owner happy by giving them extras. No extras wanted. We already told you what we want. Once 
the development team has done the work in the in the required time time box time one to four weeks whatever the team decided now comes this third event called the demo some organizations like most organizations like to nowadays call it this is the second event so we come to the third event called the demo demo is the time when this tested home page which has been tested and the check capture which has been tested is presented to the product owner and other key stakeholders and they like to test it their own way they come and they apply their acceptance and evaluation criteria and business analyst is right now facilitating this these sessions by now they have developed good understanding they're taking the lead right now right they are they are really acting as a proxy uh, product owner in in many projects product owners do not even come into the meetings after second iteration or third iteration they leave it on the business analyst and guys if you get to work on an agile based project and i'm hoping most of you would and if you are good at this you will emerge as a leader right that's why agile projects have created a lot of emergent leaders emergent leaders you don't have to wait for people to come and give you or uh, say uh, just like queen she takes a sword sword and she puts the sword in somebody's sh sh uh, shoulder and says well you are sir from today or i don't hear anything like she also created madams so it's only sir that i hear i don't know what kind of knighthood they talk about what is it for a woman i, I never heard about it so have you heard anything like that? Because I'm just surprised now that- I believe it's called a dame. Oh, okay, there we go. So what are they called, sorry? Dame, D-A-M-E. Dame, so, okay. So here you go. So Queen also has, uh, you know, um, some kind of a name. I didn't know that. So, so thank you for that, dames. All right, so uh, during uh, uh, demos or sometimes called iteration reviews, you, the business analyst, is facilitating these sessions, and the POs randomly are putting some acceptance and evaluation criteria. They may not do everything because they believe the team has done the testing already when they built it, but they're just randomly putting things and making sure that everything is working as per the plan. And after the demo, the product is ready to be shipped. It can be handed over to the customer, or they may put it aside and the team quickly one or two hours does one or two hours of retrospective or retro to understand what worked well what did not work so well and what are the opportunities for improvement product owner decides product owner decides whether whether they should release it to the customer or the product owner may say guys hold on hold on not right now we will have another iteration and then one more iteration and then we will so look now this idea of agile is based on developing a product using four events or ceremonies those four events or ceremonies of agile are they are iteration planning daily stand-up, demo or iteration review, and retrospective. For agile product development, now hear this well, for agile product development to start, your product backlog should be very stable. Otherwise, there is no agile development, right? Now look, so now, uh, so let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's go to uh salim so salim now you have a product which contains you have built how many features right now based on our conversation today um so far two or three very good home page and check capture yes. absolutely right we have built home page and check capture and it has been tested product owner has decided not to ship it right now 
So the product right now looks like this. The product owner said, no, we are not going to hand it over to the customer as yet. So your product looks like, so it's a TD website. So let's say we're building a product for TD. So here we go. We got, we got homepage. And right here, we have image capture feature. Now the team, so, and this journey from iteration planning, from iteration planning to daily standup to demo and the fourth event retrospective is called an iteration or a sprint. So this journey from right here to here, these four events are co either called a sprint or an iteration. Now, the team retrospection has been done. Few items that will help the team improve have been identified. The team comes back again at the product backlog, creates a new iteration log and acceptance and evaluation criteria. Business analyst has ramped up now. First iteration is over. They're very seasoned. They know exactly what happens. And this time the business owner says, product owner says, I like pay bills. And I also like uh, e-transfer. So this gets developed and tested. Business analyst facilitates a demo once after one or four weeks, retrospective happens. And the TD product now contains two more features, which are, uh, what were they? Pay bills. And another feature has been added, which is, uh, what was it? It was pay bills and e-transfer. Look how the product is progressively built. Now the product owner says, ship it to the customer, to the customer. The product is very stable. Ship it to the customer, the product is very stable. So the TD mobile application with homepage, image capture, pay bills, and e-transfer is released to the customer. Customers are picking up the phone and started doing the things. They started doing banking. So what are we doing as part of mobile projects? As part of mobile project, guys, as part of mobile projects, where is my pen? As part of mobile projects, the purpose of a mobile project. What is the purpose of a mobile project? Mobile application. Project in banking. What is the purpose of a mobile application project in banking? The purpose of a mobile application project in banking is to provide similar transaction, transactional capabilities as are available in branch and online channel. You know, people get so nervous and confused when someone says, well, we are working on a, uh, we are working on, you know, uh, we're working on a mobile application project. You know what is mobile application? You go look at the branch. You say, hey, uh, you know what? In the next three months, we are going to create how checks are deposited in the branch. Let's replicate it in the mobile phone or how you do it in the online application or computer-based. But 
the more sophisticated way of saying it is uh, the purpose of the project that I worked on has been a mobile application project to provide similar transactional capabilities as were available on the online channel. No one in the world speaks about business analysis the way you are hearing right now. That is why we're so good at it, right? So now look, you went to the interview, your first question. So the interview, if you were very lucky and if we are able to put you to our CIBC managers, your interview will not last 20 minutes. You know, the first question will be, all right, first of all, they will talk for 10 minutes. After they have finished talking for 10 minutes, they'll say, I told, told you so much about us. Why don't you tell me something about yourself? And here you go. You will just go out there and say what we have learned, right? And the second question is, can you please tell me what kind of work have you done recently? And your answer would be like this. Well, my most recent project has been with RBC Bank, and I've been working with them since. Do not read, right? I, I'll send the answer. I'll get my team to send the answer to you, right? So they said, tell me about your most recent project. Now look, my most recent project has been with RBC Bank and I've been working with them since June, 2019. The purpose of the project was to provide similar transactional capabilities as was available on the online channel. Now see, as this was an agile based project, once I understood the business need and put the product backlog in order working with my with my product owner, we started doing iteration planning. During iteration planning, we prioritized the user stories and also developed acceptance and evaluation criteria for the user stories. During daily standup, I became the point of contact and provided clarifications to the development team on any user stories, right? Sometimes I facilitated the sessions during that time. Once the development was done and the testing was, uh, test, test, testing was done, I started working on providing demos to my product owners and ensure that the acceptance and evaluation criteria, uh, uh, the user story or the product mapped or met the acceptance and evaluation criteria. Finally, we had a quick retrospective to understand what worked well, what did not work so well, and what were the opportunities for improvement. And then we started, I started again working with my product owner in planning for the very next sprint. Simple, right? Simple. This, this idea. And the, again, I'll tell you this. You know, when we go for an interview, there are people, we are competing with people who have 10 years of experience. It is very unfortunate that as and when people start developing experience, they also start acquiring a lot of ego. And this thing that, and they think that they can say whatever they feel like in the interview and everything, they can sell anything. Life is not like this. Life is extremely brutal, right? You got to every day you have to wake up and prepare yourself if you want to change your life. And even today, if I had to, today I had a meeting, so I went to the office. And even today, if I have to prepare for my meeting, critical meeting, a contract meeting, I sleep late in the night. I make sure that I've reviewed all my 10 years notes and I've gone through my critical things, my tell me about yourself, my most recent project, my contracts, what have I done? I still go through my script that I have built. The questions and answers that you're going to get are my stories. At this time, because you do not have any story experience, I want you to speak my story. And maybe later on, if you emerge as a great business analyst, maybe you will build your own story. But till that time, I think you should rely only on my story and, and you should speak this story. As long as you do that, you will, you will become in an interview, you're going to become extremely likable. And people who are likable are not beautiful people, right? Who emerge out of uh, beautiful mothers and fathers. No, people who are likable are people who have great knowledge. When they open their mouth, the other person feels and thinks that, oh, I love what they said. They reminded me of things that I have forgotten in my life. And that's what we are here to do. Those 20 minutes that you will get, you're going to speak the story of business analysis in, in such a manner that it has never been heard before. You will remain very structured. That's why I stopped Mona uh, uh, at some point in time. I said, you stop. Because, or, or I, I told Maria, and, uh, sorry, he says, stop right there. I don't want you to say anything because you didn't follow my order. 
every time you're going to ask me a question, I'm going to give you answers based on the order. And I also remember who said what. For example, when we started today, our session, I said, who is a business analyst? What does the business analyst do? And I said, I'm going to write it first. Business analyst is someone who understands the business need and then elicits. I said, don't use the word capture. Let's use the word elicit. Elicits stakeholders requirement. Someone, Salim ended up saying, well, they also help strip assumptions from the requirement. You, the verbiage was very uh, slightly different. They make it very pure. Then uh, went on to other folks, words like collaboration, facilitation, right? Uh, uh, most of us said something like, uh, not very definitive, but something like, well, they ask probing questions to capture not only the said, but also the unsaid requirement. There you go. We build a story of business analysis today. Then I said, well, I wanted to give you this idea of agile because if you understood this, because there's a little more to this today, uh, then we will end the session. Uh, I said, uh, when you go out there and, and people ask you about, tell me about the most recent project, stay structured. Start from the beginning to the end. What we are here to develop, another thing, another skill that we are planning to develop is that we want to develop the life cycle of everything in business analysis from the very beginning to the end. Agile projects, understand the need, uh, work with stakeholders, build the product backlog with product owner, start iteration planning, two things, user stories and acceptance and evaluation criteria. What is an acceptance and evaluation criteria? So let's put that together and that is it for today, right? Because there are 15 questions coming to you today, folks, or maybe eight, eight today. Let's just keep it light. Then, because I'm free this Sunday, and, and uh, uh, last couple of weeks, daughter has not been with me, uh, so I have time on Sunday. I want to have another session with you on Sunday, right? So I... Uh, and, and if you can come, that's okay. Uh, but I'm not going to stop my sessions. My sessions are going to continue. We're going to continue rolling because jobs that are coming, they don't, unfortunately, they don't stop coming just because we are not ready, right? They're coming. They have this scheduled release for us. Maybe four roles are coming within the next 21 to 30 days or even before that, right? I think I'm being too generous when saying. So my sessions are not going to stop. So I, I, ideally, I wanted to have this session in the school physically, and I want to do a few exercises with you. But I think uh, this session also we will go virtual. And I'll let you know what time it will be. And it will be Sunday. Uh, let's try to do early so you have your weekend to yourself. Let's try to do a two to three hour session. Let's try to do it early, maybe 9 to 12 or something like that, right? Unfortunately, I can't stall or stop my sessions from here on. Uh, I may delay them because uh, of some health condition, but but I want to have that session on Sunday because I want you to I want to cement uh, some some more understanding. I want to make sure that uh, we are on on top. Oh, did I lose you guys? We're here. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. So one last thing for today, guys, is acceptance and evaluation criteria what is acceptance and how do you write it as a business analyst acceptance and evaluation criteria who provides it who provides it stakeholder the po the product owner and and the BA helps. Sometimes the product owner may just rely on the BA and say, "Can you catch?" Is like user story. There are three components to a user story. Similarly, a good acceptance and evaluation criteria also has a meta language, guys. It has a meta language, established, established form, established syntax to make it easier for us to integrate into various teams. So. There is a meta language and the meta language, there is a meta language. And just like a user story, it also contains three components. Acceptance and evaluation criteria also contains three components of given, given, 
when and then given when and then so for every user story for example check capture user story as a user i would like so check capture user stories as a user authorized user i will like to scan or capture the image of a check so that i can deposit it and i can save time whatever that user story for every user story there should also be an acceptance and evaluation criteria it should be given the user is logged in this is one criteria for check capture given the user is logged in and has a valid username and password given when the given the user is logged in and and when the user clicks on home page then home page should be displayed given when and then so guys what i'm going to do is so for today i'm not going to elaborate on this but what i'm doing is i'm sending you a link a really good link link to see what are how do you write a good acceptance and evaluation criteria but from interview standpoint, a good acceptance and have you written acceptance and evaluation criteria? Well, I have developed acceptance and evaluation criteria for every user story. A good acceptance and evaluation criteria contains three important components and is provided by the product owner. And those three important components are given, when, and then. For example, for image capture functionality, uh, uh, acceptance and evaluation criteria could be given the user is logged in and has a valid username and password when the user clicks on home page the home page should be displayed so so folks this is it for today this is where we stop but what i'm going to do is because rupam had a question i didn't answer that question at that time i'm going to take that question and i'm going to take other questions too so any questions for today uh yes so in the product backlog uh we have a very high level uh requirement uh like in the in the exa uh, for the example of let's say uh the check image do we have to mention the details like the balance will be deducted or the balance will be increased absolutely so very good question and something that i was planning to cover in our next session because when you are when you are, uh, you know, when you uh, capture, when you add this user story to the iteration log during this time, you further decompose the user story. And, and sometimes it is called adding tasks to the user story, right? Adding tasks. And of course, uh, uh, during, uh, during iteration planning, uh, you provide further details to that high level user story that is in the product backlog. And those details could be called tasks. Okay. 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 All right, Salim, what's your question? So um, it's related to the first question. Those user tasks can be also be called uh, user points. Uh, no, it's not story points. Story points not are story estimation points. points. Uh, okay. No, they're not called. Those are estimation points. Uh, something that we will touch on, but right now we can just say, Estimation points are provided to a user story. These are high level estimation. Uh, this is high level estimation in the early stage, but uh, don't confuse the two. Okay, thank you. Please. Task is providing details and something that we will do as part of our Sunday exercise. Great, this sounds great. Okay. Thank you Any other question, guys? Because unfortunately, I can see your camera. I can't see your cameras right now. 
So if you're raising your hand, I'm not able to see them, but I will be happy to answer your questions. I have a question about, <clears throat> sorry, about the RBC. Like, for example, if you're working on a mobile, uh, like a mobile application uh, position, like in a business analyst role, uh, is there, like, does the mobile only have like one product owner or is there, because there's like different, like it gets really deep, is there different product owners for different sections or for example? Good question. Is that Yasin? Yeah, that's Yasin. Okay, Yasin. So, you know, uh, now this is a good sign that I am, I can see you, but I can, uh, I can see you from your voice. So that's a good sign now. So we are building good relationships here. So to answer your question, Yasin, you know, RBC has uh, various different lines of businesses. For example, there is personal banking for, uh, uh, you know, you have uh, a checking account, savings account, it's personal banking. Then there is also another kind of banking. It's called small business banking. Sometimes it falls under uh, falls under uh, personal banking or retail banking. Then there is commercial banking. Then there is capital markets. Then there are so many other groups. Every group has different uh, subject matter experts. So if you're working in personal banking for digital projects, there could be for mobile application projects, there could be a product owner. For online project, there could be a product owner. For brand-based project, there could be a product owner. But when you're working on a project and capturing some user stories, most of the times you would be working only with in product development with, with you on, on that specific. But there are numerous product owners within an organization. Does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, I believe you just cut off for a brief second. But I just want to confirm. You said normally there's one product owner for right. for a project, but but in an organization or in a department, there could be numerous depending on the different lines of businesses uh, that exist within the organization, right? Because one person cannot yeah. be a subject matter expert for almost all the business operations. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. Thank you for okay. that. All right, so if there are, uh, let me, uh, 